The older couple had no idea that their lives would change so much within the span of a day. To their surprise, they woke up to hear construction rattling their walls and furniture. Who could be doing this so early in the morning, they thought. But little did they know that the sound was coming from their own property, and it would have a huge effect on the rest of their lives in that house. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Neighbors can be the source of support, friendship, and shared moments of joy, but at times they can also bring unexpected challenges and tensions. They can turn a peaceful neighborhood into a battleground. In the quiet city of Hot Springs, Andrei and Anya Petrov were enjoying the comfort of friendly neighbors during their serene retirement. Little did they know that a new arrival was about to shatter their peaceful existence. Andrei and Anya Petrov lived in Hot Springs, a city in the Ouachita Mountains of Arkansas. Originally from Russia, they emigrated to the United States in the 1970s, first living in Cleveland, Ohio, before settling in Hot Springs because of Andrew's work as a park ranger. Both in their mid-60s, the Petrovs were now retired and enjoying their twilight years together. They had children and grandchildren nearby and felt like they were the luckiest people in the world. They had no idea that someone was about to disturb their little slice of paradise. Life in Hot Springs was idyllic. Andrew and Anya bathed in the famed Thermal Springs almost every day and spent a lot of their time outdoors. They embraced the rhythm of the charming city, surrounded by stunning mountain views. Their retired days were filled with leisurely strolls through the city's historic downtown, where the soothing aroma of bathhouses filled the air. They relished the slow pace of life in Hot Springs, a stark contrast to their early years of hard work and hustle as new immigrants. But they were about to face challenges that would test them to their limits. Andre and Anya were true nature enthusiasts. Their deep appreciation for the outdoors was evident in the way they dedicated their time to exploring the natural wonders of the Uachita Mountains. From hiking the winding trails to observing the native wildlife, the Petrovs reveled in the beauty of the wilderness that surrounded them. Their home was adorned with an array of plants and bird feeders, creating a haven for various critters. Unfortunately, the people who were about to move into the house next door didn't have quite such a positive attitude toward nature. One day, Andre noticed a U-Haul truck parked outside the house next door. It had stood empty for almost a year, but now it seemed like they were finally getting new neighbors. A few hours later, all the furniture had been unloaded and Andre and Anya headed over to meet the people they were about to share a fence with. Anya baked one of her famous boysenberry pies to welcome them to the neighborhood. It was another older couple, Ed and Linda Thompson. Mr. Thompson was very friendly. They had no reason to suspect that he was about to make their lives a living nightmare. It wasn't long before Mr. Thompson started to show his true colors. It started with little things. He didn't like them cooking on the grill because he said the smell got on his laundry. He knocked on the door every time Andrew got out his accordion, claiming the noise disturbed him. He didn't like the way the Petrovs left their lawn to grow long until it was filled with wildflowers, claiming the weeds were making their way into his yard. He brought round cans of paint, looking pointedly at the peeling red of the Petrovs' porch walls. They constantly felt like he was spying on them and judging them. But this was just the beginning. When fall came around, things started to get really heated. In the middle of the Petrovs' yard stood a tall, beautiful oak tree. Its wide canopy provided shade and the couple loved listening to the birds who made their homes in its branches. However, Mr. Thompson was not so enchanted. Every time Andrew saw his neighbor out in the garden, mowing his meticulously trimmed lawn, he would complain about the tree. It blocks my view, Andrew, and all of those pesky leaves fall into my yard, and it's me who's forced to spend hours clearing them away. Leaf blowers don't come cheap, you know. Please do the right and civil thing and cut the flipping thing down, he demanded. But Andrew wasn't going to give in that easily. Andrew tried to be civil to his neighbor, but this was beyond ridiculous. The tree had been there since they moved in, his children had played in it, and it was part of the family. What's more, it was home to so much native wildlife. There was no way Andrew would agree to chop it down. He tried to be polite to his neighbor. I'm sorry, Ed, but I can't cut it down. That tree is very important to Anya and me. I'm happy to help you rake up the leaves, Andrew said. Mr. Thompson scowled at him and stomped back into his house. It clearly wasn't over. Over the next few weeks, Mr. Thompson started making threats, casting a dark cloud over the once peaceful street. He would frequently approach Andrew and Anya, his demeanor increasingly aggressive. You're going to regret not cutting that tree down, Andrew would say, his face contorted with anger. He began to hint at legal action, claiming the tree violated some obscure local ordinance. In whispered conversations with other neighbors, he alluded to taking matters into his own hands if they didn't comply with his demands. The atmosphere in the neighborhood grew tense and Andrew and Anya were left feeling harassed and anxious about what Mr. Thompson might do next. On Halloween night, the Petrovs were woken in the middle of the night by a deafening crash that seemed to shake their whole house. They assumed it was just kids playing around and went back to sleep soon after. 
However, the next morning, something felt different. Anya woke up to see the light coming in from a strange angle through the curtains. She quickly woke Andrea and they both rushed to the window. The sight that they saw in their yard made their blood run cold. Through the window, Andrea and Anya could see their beautiful oak tree lying across the garden. Heavy branches had smashed through their shed and there were leaves and debris all over the place. Where once had stood the tall, proud oak was now a ragged stump. It was clear that this wasn't the result of even the strongest wind. No. The tree had been deliberately chopped down using a chainsaw and an axe, and the Petrovs had a good idea who had done it. The couple was in shock. How could their neighbor have done such a terrible thing? They had heard his threats, but they never thought he'd stoop to such a violent act, not to mention trespassing on and damaging their property. Of course, they had no proof it had been Ed Thompson, but they could be fairly sure that he was the culprit. No one else had made such a fuss about their beloved tree. With heavy hearts, they headed downstairs to see the massacre close up. Both in their robes and slippers, Andrea and Anya went outside to assess the damage. The old oak had been felled in a clumsy and unprofessional way, clearly by someone with no experience. The cut was jagged and aggressive. The windows of the shed were smashed and the roof was caving in under the weight of the branches. Worst of all, several birds' nests had been catapulted onto the ground. Mr. Thompson was going to pay for this. It took the Petrovs a few days to work up the strength to go and confront Mr. Thompson. They were devastated and it was going to take a lot to even look their neighbor in the eye after what he had done. Finally, Andrew headed round and knocked at the door, false cheery look plastered to his face. Mr. Thompson opened it, looking wary. Mr. Thompson, I'm sure you've noticed our lovely old oak has been torn down. I wondered if you knew anything about it, Andre said in a forced casual tone. He watched the smug look fall from Mr. Thompson's face. He could tell his neighbor knew he'd been caught. At first, Mr. Thompson tried to deny any involvement. What a thing to suggest, Mr. Petrov. The idea that I would sneak into your garden on Halloween night and cut down your precious tree, I would never, Mr. Thompson replied. But Andre looked him squarely in the face and said, we know you did it, Ed. And Marissa crossed the street as Kekvi that can prove it. I wanted to give you a chance to confess before we go to the police. After some back and forth, Mr. Thompson finally admitted what he had done, but he didn't show any remorse. It was blocking my view, so tough luck, he said arrogantly. Andre could tell he was going to need to take things further. Over the next few days, Andre and Anya set about researching what could be done to make Mr. Thompson pay for what he had done. They spent hours studying local law documents and learned that unauthorized tree removal comes with a hefty fine. Plus, Mr. Thompson had illegally trespassed on their property and damaged one of their outbuildings. It seemed like they had enough to go on to take him to court. Through a local wildlife conservation group, Andre found a lawyer to represent him and Anya. Penelope Cresswell was an environmental lawyer who worked in the small claims court on the side to help pay the bills. Not only did she understand the ins and outs of the law, but she also could understand exactly what the felling of the tree meant in terms of habitat destruction. When Anya and Andre showed her pictures of the old oak, Penelope gasped. She quickly identified something about the tree that not even the Petrovs had realized, something that was going to make things a whole lot more difficult for Mr. Thompson. Penelope Cresswell was wonderful. She visited Andre and Anya in their home and took the time to talk them through all the legal ramifications of Mr. Thompson's crime. Their neighbor across the street, Marissa, provided them with the sect footage, meaning that they had all the evidence they needed for a watertight court case. Penelope revealed to them exactly what she had noticed about the tree. It made Mr. Thompson's barbarous act all the more devastating, but it also meant that he was about to get a much larger punishment than he was expecting. A few months went by, and then it was finally time for the court case. The atmosphere had been frosty between the Petrov house and the Thompson house, and now it was practically Arctic. The case was going to be settled once and for all. In the courthouse, they all filed in, ready for Penelope to read her statement. She detailed the monetary damages to the Petrov property and the nature of the trespassing, and she presented this thick footage to the judge. But she had saved the big guns for last. She was about to reveal to the judge and the Thompsons just what was so special about that beautiful old oak tree. The tree that Mr. Thompson willfully destroyed was a maple leaf oak. The maple leaf oak occurs only in the Ouachita Mountains of Arkansas in Oklahoma. It is a critically endangered species protected by law in North America. There are only 600 specimens left in the wild, declared Penelope. Oaks are also home to the highest invertebrate diversity of any other tree in the U.S., as well as countless birds, rodents, and other wildlife species she went on. Mr. Thompson's face turned white. He knew this meant trouble. Penelope revealed that the fine for deliberately felling such a tree without a permit was up to $30,000 and her six months in jail. The Environmental Protection Agency came down hard on anyone destroying endangered species to make an example of them and Mr. Thompson knew it. He was terrified. When it came to his statement, he pleaded ignorance saying that he had no idea of the value of the tree and that he was sorry for his actions. But was it too late? Was Mr. Thompson about to be sent to jail? 
The court staff ushered everyone back in after the recess, and the judge made his way up to the bench, ready to deliver his verdict. In his deep, commanding voice, he began to speak. Mr. Thompson, you are hereby charged with the unlawful felling of a protected species of significant damage to the Petrov property and of illegal trespassing with intent to commit a crime. It is up to the Petrovs how much money you will be required to pay to repair the property, he ruled. When it comes to your heinous act of environmental destruction, I have a rather unusual sentence, the judge continued. Then the judge said something that no one could have expected. Mr. Thompson, as you have no prior criminal convictions and you have made an early admission of fault, I am going to give you a chance to make things right, he went on. You will still have to pay a fine, but I am not going to charge you $30,000. At least I won't if you agree to these terms. You will be required as part of your community service to volunteer at Hot Springs National Park. You will also attend a course in wildlife conservation at National Park College. If you comply with these requirements, your fine will be reduced to $8,000, he said sternly. It wasn't hard for the Petros to tell that Ed Thompson couldn't believe he was being given such a generous second chance. His face was shining with relief and gratitude. They didn't know for sure, but they had a feeling things were going to be okay. A few days later, there was a knock on the door. Andrew got up to answer it and was surprised to find Mr. Thompson on the doorstep. In his hands, there was a freshly baked boysenberry pie. He apologized profusely for his actions, promising he was wholeheartedly committed to his community service and making up for what he had done. Andrew accepted the pie gratefully, but was still a little suspicious of his neighbor. It would take time to build trust between them. Mr. Thompson's newfound perspective on life was a transformation nobody had anticipated. As he began his community service and wildlife conservation course, he began to realize the profound impact of his actions. The more he learned about the fragile state of the maple leaf oak and the interconnectedness of all living creatures, the deeper his remorse became. Andrea and Anya, initially skeptical of Mr. Thompson's change of heart, saw a genuine transformation in him. They decided to forgive him for the destruction he had caused. Andrew believed that it was essential to extend an olive branch to foster understanding and collaboration rather than perpetuating animosity. Mr. Thompson and his wife even helped the Petrovs rebuild their shed, and the couple spent long evenings working in the yard and talking. It turned out that they weren't so different after all. Slowly, slowly, their bond became stronger. But they didn't stop there. United by a shared love for wildlife conservation, Andrew and Mr. Thompson decided to join forces and make a difference. They began visiting local schools, sharing their story with students and educating them about the importance of preserving the natural world. Their dynamic and informative presentations and heartfelt messages resonated with both young and old, leaving a lasting impact. Even though the beautiful old tree was dead, Andrew and his neighbor found a way to give her an incredible legacy. Their efforts didn't stop at school visits. Andrea and Mr. Thompson launched grassroots campaigns in the community to raise awareness about endangered species and environmental conservation. Even after his community service hours were complete, Mr. Thompson continued volunteering at the National Park, often rallying big groups of local volunteers to join him. The two former enemies organized cleanup initiatives, tree planting events, and birdhouse building workshops involving neighbors and friends in their mission. As a symbol of their newfound partnership and commitment to conservation, Andrea and Mr. Thompson planted a new maple leaf oak at the boundary between their two gardens. It wasn't long before the little sapling grew stronger and taller, unfurling new green maple-shaped leaves. The tree represented hope, forgiveness, and the potential for positive change. It also served as a reminder of the importance of preserving the natural world. The local paper even came to photograph the two men shaking hands in front of it. When the Thompsons moved in next door to the Petrovs, neither couple had any idea just what was about to unravel. Andre and Anya couldn't have predicted that Mr. Thompson's vendetta against a tree in their garden would end up with them both in court. However, the two couples were able to overcome their differences and became an inspiring force for positive change. We're sure that Andre and Ed's conservation initiatives are going from strength to strength, transforming hot springs into a hotbed of environmental progress. We hope that the new maple leaf oak is flourishing and that it will continue to do so for generations. 